Hi, this is Boon, um, a security manager from International SOS uh, based in Singapore. Uh, I am here right now in Jayapura and um, right now I'm actually standing right beside the Santani Airport and Jayapura Road which is the only road that leads between Jayapura City and Santani Airport. This is very important because in between these two locations there is also uh, an area where we see protests happen from time to time and uh, when it does escalate these roads can be blocked uh, that includes also potentially floods happening uh, so for businesses organizations who send travelers coming into Jayapura it's very important to plan against these that area behind me that is actually a port which has a passenger ship that travels between a lot of the major Indonesian cities including to Jakarta, Surabaya. However, this um, ship is very slow. It takes a long time to travel. Between Jakarta and Jayapura, it takes seven days. So depending on the situation, this may be an option but it's likely a last resort because it's generally used by locals and can be um, quite limited in terms of um, safety and security. Now I am here in the area of Ruko. So this is a more secured area in Jayapura uh, in the central business district area as well where there is a lot of uh, security um, establishment which means that uh, during times of uh, escalation it is one of the areas that is less likely to be affected by um, violent unrest. However, um, here I want to highlight the dangers, the other risk that Jayapura faces and that is the risk of earthquake. So uh, if you can see behind me, uh, there is a little bit of rubble here and there and broken buildings. So what this is, is the aftermath of an earthquake of only around 5.2 or 5.4 magnitude earlier in last year in February. So this earthquake um, resulted not just in the collapse of this building but also uh, cracks in some of the other better infrastructure for example one of the four-star hotels here that uh, I'm currently staying at as well as a large mall in Jayapura. The traffic can be somewhat chaotic and that, that's why um, it's very important to really be aware and be cautious when walking alongside um, anywhere in uh, Jayapura. And it's also very important to remember the, these pavements that you're seeing behind me, it's not always found in Jayapura. Most of the city, in fact, do not have these type of pavements and lighting is also quite limited so after dark this is one of the areas where it is brightly lit and uh, it is still technically feasible to walk around for a little while but in most other areas it is actually quite dark and uh, what we do not recommend is to really walk alone uh, especially if you're a foreigner so um, what we see here in Jayapura is that uh, the situation has been ra rather peaceful. Uh, we haven't really seen any post-election uh, tension or um, issues uh, on the ground. Most people are re aren't really talking about it. Uh, that said, uh, we're not saying that there is no risk of unrest. It's very important to keep in mind that uh, the regional election is still coming up in November. And during that election, where people will elect their governors and their mayors, the potential for unrest is actually higher than the election this time round. I'm now back at the Assistance Centre in Singapore and have been working with our colleagues to integrate insights gained and networks established from the visit across our intelligence and assistance platform. For example, the risk rating review that we conducted a couple of weeks ago uh, on the six provinces of Papua where we reduced the risk rating from high to medium for most of Papua and that includes uh, Jayapura and Sorong only central and highland Papua where we see 
ongoing violence perpetrated by the separatist TPNPB group, these two provinces remain at high risk. It is important to keep in mind, however, that despite this reduced rating, the, most of Papua are still sensitive areas and travel to these areas for business will still require permit from the authorities. Finally, the risk of unrest remains, especially with a couple of key dates such as the Independence Day in August as well as the regional elections in November coming up. However, for Papua, do keep in mind that local issues and grievances such as the viral video that we saw uh, of a soldier torturing indigenous local Papuans or the incident that we saw in 2019, these issues that relates to the local um, psyche are just as likely, if not more likely, to cause widespread unrest in this region. Thank you.